Felix here and Cellula has a serious warning for stock investors, no just kidding. And a bit seriously, we are going to look here at some really important Ow, <laughs> some really important uh, macro indicators. You can see he's in charge around here. Um, and understand what's happening today and why that rings some alarm bells in my mind in what I'm doing about it. So the fear here isn't that you aren't an options trader yet. No, we're not going to go that low. Uh, we're going to, however, encourage you to get your hands on Goldman's top 18 growth picks. It's a free benchmark. I made it just for you, so download it. It's, it's one of the things that I, I like to do because I want to make you smarter investors. That's really what this is all about. Here it is. Here's that beautiful benchmark. So download it. It's completely free. Here it is. FelixRans.org slash 18. Easy to remember. And also bear in mind, we've got the greatest disclaimers in the industry. This isn't financial advice. No, nope, this is hopefully educational. That's really what we aim for here. So what have we got, got in store? Well, there's a couple of things we need to understand as a baseline. And then we go into really today. I want to look at a couple of the earnings today and see and show you where madness is hiding and what that means for us. So sentiment, what is sentiment? Well, basically, if you are up here, everybody is bullish. If you are down here, below the zero line, then everybody is very, very sad and expects the world to end. And I know some people are always there, but at the moment we are still down here. That's pretty negative. It's a bit of a recovery, yep, but it's still pretty bad. Uh, we were, by the way, lower than we were in like 2008. So this has been really very, very bearish. So still that negative sentiment, demand for put options. Uh, which people buy to protect themselves against the falling market sort of hedging uh, is, is still through the roof as well. Wall Street's scared. Yep, they are. All those people in those tight little midtown vests are running around going, Wah! you know, that sort of thing. And um, what is happening? We're getting downgrades. So when you are below the 50 po point line here, basically anything below that means you're getting downgrades for S&P 500 stocks, and it's, you know, more than half. So at the moment, about, what's that? About 65% of all analyst upgrades are downgrades. Now, that's pretty bad, right? So that's happening. And remember, that's forward-looking. That's looking at the next quarter and the quarter after that. Now, we just got in the softest labor demand since September last year, this is a much faster indicator than unemployment because this is employers saying, hey, we've got this many jobs open. You can change that very easily. Don't fire anybody. No legal consequences. And that's coming down. Now, the Fed's going to love that. So that's the positive. The positive is the Fed's going to go like, woohoo, you know, uh, Jay Powell is going to make a little, a little merry dance in the Hamptons somewhere with his champagne flute. And he's going to want, to want that to come down even more. Uh, we've got two to one job openings per unemployed person. So ideally, this would come down to like down here, six million. That's probably not going to happen. Uh, but somewhere between eight and nine million is probably around about the target range. So we still got to destroy about a million and a half American job openings. And that's a challenge. That is what would make in, in, uh, inflation go away and cause unemployment. Now, we've got Two uh, talking heads from the Fed today. Uh, we had um, Fed President Evans saying that 75 by basis points in September could also be okay. I doubt that more would be called for, but she is um, looking at the 50 to 75 points. So that's not a particularly soft stance there. She's also saying, look, it would be premature to unwind all of what we've done. I also think that we've been with this high inflation for a while and really getting too confident that we've already solved the problem. Uh, so, you know, we need to keep committed until we actually see that in the data. So don't expect the Fed to turn around immediately. Now, on to earnings. So we've got some really, really strong earnings reactions here. We had Amazon, we had Roki, we've got Uber now up, I don't know, 15% or something. Now, I just want to show you why this isn't necessarily the lasting bull market that it appears to be. And I also want to say at the same time, I'm a huge fan of buying stocks in bear markets. I love a bear market. I love a recession. Why? Because you can pick up great companies at cheaper prices, but you need to bear in mind where you are so that when the market goes down further, you don't flip out and sell it all again. That would be particularly unhelpful. So Uber's um, earnings, which are somehow being celebrated by the market, look, if you look at their trips, they were up 
versus the same period in 2019, true. But if you compare it with just pre-COVID, they were down 2%. So we're three years later, and in three years, they've managed minus 2% growth. You were telling me that that's something to celebrate. Uh, inflation in that time period has been, what, 20 maybe 30%, and they're down 2% in number of trips. That doesn't really bode very well, does it? In addition to high ride prices, at least some of Uber's outperformance in mobility revenue comes from a change in how it accounts for its ride operations in the UK. So financial shenanigans by accountants. Again, that doesn't mean the business got better. It just means they recorded it in a way that makes it look better. How about Uber Eats? Isn't that the shining beacon? Well, it's positive. Yes, gross bookings in the quarter are up 21%. And guess what? That's exactly what Wall Street is expecting for DoorDash. So when you get the results that are exactly as the market expects, the stock price shouldn't really move forward because we expected it. You have to beat expectations for the market to go up. Um, and at the same time, international delivery business the gross bookings fell 5%, weighed by negative foreign exchange. The strong US dollar, which is up again today, uh, is, is having an impact, and that's gonna, what we're going to keep seeing through the next quarter. They're experiencing, this is what you said, we're experiencing slower category growth. We're guiding to delivery gross bookings for the third quarter that are roughly flat. So basically, same jibber as in 2019, nothing really gained here. What are we doing here? So let's have a look at what the stocks are doing, and you can judge for yourself. So um, one thing you can also judge, of course, is my options performance. I'm up 112% so far this year. These are realized gains. We just made $525 today. And if you want to see all of the trades, there are about 200 or so of them on here. I share all of them with you. I share all of them live. I ping them all on the Discord channel. We have a lovely community here where I, I share them with, with all of the... Um, you know, everybody on, on that. So if you want to check that out, um, go to felixrenzelog slash options. See so you can make money in literally any market, up, down, sideways, backwards, whatever. We just make money. felixrenzelog slash options. The coupon code there is freedom. So write that down, check it out. It's completely risk-free. And I really mean that. You can literally take the entire program. And uh, after 90 days, let me know how you feel about it. So what do I do? Well, look, I look at a stock screen up and I've got a Got you know sort of popularish stocks on here. Now look at what's up. Uber is up 17%. I've just gone through the the earnings results. They were not particularly great. Um, Bingo is up. Peloton is up. SNDL is up. Rights up. These are pretty shockingly terrible companies. Um, DraftKings is actually not a bad business, but it's also very speculative. Um, Coinbase, you know, it's up and down. NNBC, Plug, Upstart, Workhorse. These are the Reddit titles of 2020 and 2021. They are up in the double digits. What does that mean? Well, let's have a look at what's down. Well, Visa Card, a business with like an 80% gross margin, is down. Intel's down. Microsoft, one of the greatest businesses out there, is down. The biggest American bank, JP Morgan's down. Mastercard's down. You know, so what the heck's going on here? Does any of this make sense? No, it doesn't. And um, why do we see these going up? Two reasons for it. One, the stocks that are shorted the most tend to move a lot in these scenarios because people are getting out of short positions and, and they are feeling a little bit, ooh, about it. So the stock prices keep, you know, go up. Plus the gamblers are, are back occasionally and they get exuberant much more easily. To me, when the rubbish is up, I'm not saying Uber is rubbish, but a lot of the other stuff at the top of that list is, to me, it's an indicator that this isn't a sustained rally. This is one of those, oh, you know, everything's going to the moon. Reminds me of 2019, uh, you know, pass me a drink type stuff. So be cautious with this. This is what I would say. Do look for bargains. That's really what you can do. Um, take advantage of that. You know, we've got our lovely little stock screener. You can you can take that and 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 make better informed decisions. Uh, so if you go to our Life Portfolio Tracker, put in any tickers here that you like, like a hundred of them literally, you hit the update button and, and it pulls off up for you all of the core data, you know, the gross margins, return on equity, uh, debt ratios, forward PE ratios, long-term earnings per share growth, institutional ownership, short ratios, all that stuff that you need to know quarter on quarter. And, and you, you know where to go. Links down below, felixfrenzadoc slash Patreon. Uh, but really, if you're only going to do one thing today, 
you know, what, 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 what can I say other than uh, would you like to be up 112% <laughs> since the beginning of the year? Uh, you would be if you joined me at the beginning of the year. And, and the wonderful thing I see with a lot of my, my coaching students is uh, the guys who are taking this most seriously. Um, actually, there are, there are some some girls. There are, um, although it's, it seems to be dominated still by, by men for some reason, the whole investment space. Um, you know, feel free to check that out. Felix friends on Auxilis Coaching, um, in which case I, I actually mentor you and coach you one-on-one -on -one and, and, and take you really through everything so this is really for the overachievers just check it out felixfrenz.org slash coaching and i appreciate you tuning in i appreciate you watching thank you for building this community and um keep investing in yourself become a better investor that's where all the money is made right you should really be making nine tenth of all your money in investing and less than one tenth with your salary or your business and unfortunately for most people that's the wrong way around and that just means you're not doing the investing job the right because you're spending all of your time figuring out your job or your business and you don't have any time and you don't make any time for the investment side which is bound to be 10 times more profitable than all the money that you bring in. The money you bring in is the seed money, it's the start money, but you need to make it work, you need to set it to work and your life will be so much more fulfilled to be able to do and whatever you want to do, have an impact, share things with people. And that's really why I do this, because I really enjoy it. I, I, I love teaching and I really uh, get a kick out of seeing people get results and, and, and just be jubilant and celebrate. So thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. See you on the next one.